everybody. Welcome back from your Easter break. I hope you had a great time. Today I want to talk a little bit about gas stoichiometry. Make sure I've got a good marker in here. Hang on just one second. There we go. So we solved lots and lots of stoichiometry problems so far this year. I'd say it's one of those themes that just keeps recurring over and over again in chemistry. And a lot of the times when I talk about stoichiometry, I like to think about these islands of stoichiometry. You probably still have this somewhere in your notes. If you want to pause the video so you can redraw it or pause the video so you can find your picture of it, that might be a good idea. But the basic idea here is that on the left side, we have all the ways we can represent a quantity of substance A. And on the right side, we have all the ways we can represent a quantity of substance B. The only way we can connect between substance A and substance B the only bridge between these two items is the mole ratio. And we've talked about how stoichiometry problems always have three steps. The first step is to change whatever amount you're given into moles. The second step is to change moles of what you're given into moles of what you're asked for. And the third step is to change moles of what you're asked for into whatever substance it is that you're asked for. Occasionally, if the problem gives you moles, you can skip the first step. Occasionally, if the problem asks you for moles, you can skip the third step. But this central step, this mole ratio step, has to be in every stoichiometry problem. Because the key to being a stoichiometry problem is that you're given an amount of one substance and asked for an amount of another substance. And that's sort of the key to how, how we know that what we're solving is a stoichiometry problem. Okay. So what we need to add here then are the gases. We're going to make our gas stoichiometry a little bit easy. We will only work gas stoichiometry problems at STP. Now, if you've watched the videos from yesterday, you know that STP, or last week rather, STP is standard temperature and pressure. We're going to use the standard temperature and pressure of one atmosphere and zero degrees Celsius. But we're also going to remember that when we solve gas problems, our temperatures always have to be in Kelvin, which means rather than using zero degrees Celsius, we'll use 273 Kelvin for our temperature. As long as our gas is at STP, as long as our gas is at one atmosphere and at 273 Kelvin, then one mole of any gas will occupy 22.4 liters. And we're going to use that fact to work our stoichiometry problems. So that's going to let us go from moles of A to volume of A when A is a gas using 22.4 liters for every mole. We can go from moles of B to volume of B when B is a gas using 22.4 liters. Now, one thing we want to be really careful with, you can see we've got two volume islands on each side of these of, of, of my, uh, my picture here. But I've been specific here. I've written AQ over here. This is the volume of a solution of A. To convert volume of a solution to moles, we need the molarity of the solution. To convert the volume of A to moles, we're going to use 22.4. Now, next year in chemistry too, we will not always assume that our gas is at STP, and we'll learn to work problems that are just a step more complicated. But for this year, this is going to serve us pretty well. So let's work a sample problem. Let's work the hydrogen peroxide decomposition. H2O2 will decompose to form water and oxygen gas. This is the reaction that we did in the lab this morning. Some of you got to watch me do it in person. Some of you will watch it on the video. To balance this reaction, it almost looks like it's balanced, but we're going to have to end up putting a 2 in front of the peroxide and a 2 in front of the water. So let's try a problem. Let's imagine that we start with Oh, let's just take 25 grams of hydrogen peroxide. 
25 grams of hydrogen peroxide is way more than we actually had in that tiny little sample in the Erlenmeyer class today. So the question is, if we start with 25 grams of H2O2, what volume of oxygen can we make at STP? Now that at STP is important, it's going to let us use that 22.4. So this is a stoichiometry problem. It gives us an amount of one chemical substance, the H2O2, and asks us for an amount of another chemical substance, the O2. If we look at our islands over here, we're going to start at mass of A, and we need to go to volume of B. So our path is clear. There's only one way to go. We're going to go from the mass of A to the moles of A using the molar mass of hydrogen peroxide. We'll go from moles of A to moles of B using the mole ratio from the balanced equation. And then we can go from moles of B to volume of B using our new 22.4 liters. So let's see what this looks like. We'll start with 25 grams of H2O2. Our first step is to change grams into moles. Since grams is the unit we're getting rid of, it goes on the bottom, grams of H2O2. We're hoping to turn it into moles of H2O2. To change grams into moles, we need a molar mass. That's what's over the line there, and it's what we've done every time we've had to change grams into moles. To find the molar mass of H2O2, we grab a periodic table, we add up two times the mass of oxygen, plus two times the mass of hydrogen. And what we're going to find is that it is 34.0 grams of H2O2 for every one mole. The molar mass always goes next to grams, and it's always per one mole. All right, so now we've made it to mole island. Now we're going to have to go from moles of A to moles of B with our mole ratio. The unit we're getting rid of goes on the bottom. That's moles of H2O2 on the bottom moles of O2 on the top. The numbers in front for the mole ratio come from the balanced equation. So there's a 2 in front of the H2O2 and a 1 in front of O2. So there's our mole ratio. Now we're at moles of B. And the last step is to change that moles of B into volume of B. And that's where we're going to use that 22.4 liters. The unit we're getting rid of is moles of O2. So moles of O2 goes at the bottom liters of O2 goes at top, and because this gas is at STP, for every one mole of any gas at STP, it'll occupy 22.4 liters. All right, so now we're ready for, for a calculator, maybe. Oh, there it is. And while I'm typing this into a calculator, let me tell you what your secret question for today is. Your secret question for today is, what's your favorite candy, Easter candy or otherwise? All right, 25 divided by 34 divided by 2 times 22.4 gives me 8.235. Are we done? I hear you all saying, no, we're not done. We have to be sure. How many sig figs should this answer have? We have two in the mass, three in our molar mass. What about the mole ratio? Good. Because that's an exact number, we get to ignore it for sig fig purposes. And then 22.4 has three significant figures. So as is usually the case, our first number is going to limit our sig figs. We'll get to keep the eight and the two. After the two is a three, so it doesn't round up. Those are our sig figs. What about our units? Let's check. Grams of H2O2 cancels grams of H2O2. Moles of H2O2 cancels moles of H2O2. Moles of O2 cancels moles of O2. And what we're left with is liters of oxygen. We can go back to the problem. The problem said we were supposed to be finding volume of oxygen. So liters make sense as a unit. And we don't really have a strong sense of reasonableness yet with gas stoichiometry problems. But we have less than a mole here. To have a whole mole of H2O2, we need 34 grams. And we only get half a mole of oxygen for each mole of H2O2. So the fact that this volume is a lot less than 22, that does seem to make some sense. At any rate, this is going to be our correct answer. We can put a box around it. 
and go on. So that's our basic gastroechiometry problem. But there's one other type of gastroechiometry problem that we can work. Let's imagine that instead of starting with a mass of a substance over here, what if we had two reactants that were gases, or we were converting between a reactant and a product that were gases? Let's do the combustion of methane. That's a reaction we've written lots of times. Methane is CH4. That's what comes out of the gas jets in our Bunsen burners. It's the gas that's probably used to heat your house. It's the gas that's used to create electricity in our part of the world. And when it's combusted, combustion reactions always involve adding oxygen and making carbon dioxide and water. We balance this reaction lots of times. So we end up with a 2 in front of the H2O and a 2 in front of the O2. So let's ask this question. In order to combust sixty-four liters of methane. volume of O2 would be needed. So this is a slightly different problem. What we're given is an amount of substance A that's a volume of a gas. And we're asked for an amount of substance B that's a volume of a gas. But as I draw these lines, you may realize I go over kind of the same bridge forwards and then backwards. If you go ahead and write this out in your paper, you're going to see that to begin with, we'll divide by 22.4, and then at the end, we're going to multiply by 22.4. Well, you don't it doesn't take a, a whole like crazy amount of math skill to know that multiplying by 22.4 and then dividing by 22.4, or vice versa, will not do anything at all. Turns out there's a secret bridge, a secret path between volume of A and volume of B. It turns out that we can use a volume ratio. That is the same as the mole ratio. As long as both of our substances are gases, and as long as the temperature and pressure are constant, it turns out they don't even have to be at STP. As long as they're both at the same temperature and pressure, we get to use this secret bridge. And let me show you how easy this is. We start with 64 liters of methane. And the volume ratio bridge tells us for every one liter of methane, we need two liters of O2. And that's all there is to it. And that's just from the balanced equation here. For every one liter of methane, we need two liters of O2. When I do this math, I find that I'll need 128 liters of oxygen gas. If we want to round that to the correct number of sig figs, we really should only keep two. So we'll call that 130 liters of oxygen. So in this video, you've seen two different ways to solve gas stoichiometry problems. When you start with a mass, or we could have started with a volume, we could have started with representative particles, although we hardly ever do, then we can work our stoichiometry problems, putting that 22.4 liters per mole into our um, divisional analysis. Also, sometimes, if our reactants and products are both gases at the same temperature and pressure, we can use our secret bridge, our secret mole volume ratio bridge. All right, this should have you set to do all of the um, UT Quest. Um, the UT Quest is due on Thursday before your quiz on Friday. So watch this video, take your viewing quiz, finish your UT Quest, finish your lab. We've got a lot to do this week. Um, but that's a good thing though. Lots of stuff to keep us busy and lots of good grades to go in the J-Pans. Y'all have a terrific day and I'll see you soon.